The universe is big and it's mysterious and maybe there's more life out there oh, and parallel universes also but watch out for heat death though we're probably just living in simulation anyway so are you tired of how big and confusing the universe is do you feel like in trying to understand everything you end up understanding nothing imagine how light feels light has to pass through space every day and the ride is not smooth in this video, I'm going to be discussing how light travels through space and focusing on the three main things that really keep me up at night about its journey. The ideas that I cannot stop thinking about no matter how hard I try. Some of the concepts might appear quite simple, but do not be fooled. If you think about them for too long, your brain will disintegrate. But each idea will be summarized in a sentence. So by the end of this video, you will love astrophysics if you don't already and want to learn more. Or at the very least, you'll have a quick one-liner that you can whip out and impress people at parties with. Welcome to Brain Noises. My name is Chloe. I am a science communicator and recovering physicist. And on this channel, I like to talk about the thoughts the feelings, the ridiculousness that runs through my mind, generally relating to science, but I cannot make any promises. So if you think that's something that you would like to hear more of, then please subscribe, give it a like, etc, etc. Before I begin, I just want to thank everyone who has been watching my content. About 70 more of you have become subscribers in the last few weeks, which is a really big number to me at least. <laughs> and especially those who've left comments, it can really feel like you're putting content out into the void. So I really appreciate all your thoughts and feelings. It's just quite wild to know that like people are watching. So yeah, thanks to all of you. The universe is so big that looking far into the distance means looking far into the past. Often with physics, a lot of what we learn takes quite a lot of brain power to just kind of unpick your intuition and really understand some of the concepts especially in things like quantum physics where it's just so different to like how the world looks around us and what i enjoy about this idea of looking into the distance and like seeing the past is that it sounds so boggling but when you break it down it actually is really really logical and it doesn't require too much brain power to really kind of understand where it comes from so although it's very easy to forget about when going about our daily business light does actually have a speed about 300,000 no 300 million meters per second its speed does actually vary but we're not talking about that right now now this number is incredibly big but it's not infinity big so if you just consider the screen that you're looking at right now let's assume it's a meter away it's probably like 15 centimeters from your face but but we're assuming a meter just for eye health reasons and easier maths anyway assuming the screen is a meter away the light will take one over 300 million seconds to reach you. That is 0. 0.00, I'm counting on my fingers, can you see? 0. Okay, let's start again. 0. 0. 0.00000003 seconds to reach you. And even then, like from me having to string off these noughts, I feel like you would have zoned out at about the second naught anyway. It's very clear that that is incredibly small as a number, like the amount of time that this light takes to go from your screen to your eyes is very much negligible to us. But we are still technically seeing in the past. What we are seeing is actually what your screen was looking like, not point, et cetera, et cetera, seconds in the past. So this is a bit of a, yeah, big whoop doesn't really affect us down on earth with such small distances. But considering space, which is very big, inconceivably big to my pea brain anyway. As an example, one of the distant galaxies that was observed this year for the first time is 13.5 billion light years away. This means that light, light, which is as we've established extremely fast, takes 13.5 billion years to reach us. So what we are seeing is in fact the galaxy 13.5 billion years ago. The light that's just reached our eyes set off 
from the galaxy that long ago. Even light from our sun, which we would consider relatively close, takes about eight minutes to get to us. Some things are so massive that they distort the path of light. An extreme example of this one is black holes. A black hole is a region of space-time where gravity is so strong that not even light can escape it. So we can't really see black holes. The way that we detect them is surrounding material gets forced into a disk spinning round the black hole, and it ends up spinning so fast that this material speeds up and emits x-rays. And it's those x-rays that we detect on Earth. And that's the main kind of way that we will detect a black hole. But black holes are a very extreme example of light or the path of light being manipulated by mass. So when light reaches us from distant galaxies, it has taken its sweet time to get to us, but there are other things we have to consider about the light that's reaching us. Yes, it's incredibly old, but its path hasn't necessarily been a straight one. If you've been keeping up with the space imaging news, you would have heard the phrase gravitational lensing thrown about quite a lot. Gravitational lensing occurs when a massive celestial body, such as a galaxy cluster, causes a sufficient curvature of space-time for the path of light around it to be visibly bent, as if by a lens. Hence, the body causing the light to curve is called a gravitational lens. According to Einstein's general theory of relativity, time and space are fused together in a quantity known as space-time. Within this theory, massive objects cause space-time to curve, and gravity is simply the curvature of space-time. Very simply, think of a ball falling into a crater caused by a much bigger ball. That's how a lot of the images, when we're trying to kind of conceptualize space-time look. So as light travels through space-time, the theory predicts that light will also be curved by stuff with mass. The effect of gravitational lensing is very dramatic and tangible, like we really do see it in a lot of the images we take. If you have a gravitational lens, so one of these huge bodies, between a mass and a telescope, you might observe a distorted version of the object that's in the distance, that's behind the lens. So this might look like a ring or a halo around the gravitational lens. And looking at this ring and understanding the distortion allows scientists to then kind of unpick what exactly this object might be looking like. This lensing effect is also kind of like a magnifying glass, so it can magnify objects. And we've actually been able to see objects that are so far away we wouldn't usually be able to see them, but because of a gravitational lens, we can. The apparent colour of an object depends on how fast it's going. Redshift is a really key concept for astronomers, and it must be taken into account when we observe space. Redshift is when the wavelength of the light is stretched, so the light is seen as shifted towards the red part of the spectrum. In space, this happens when an object is moving away from the observer. And due to the expansion of the universe, this idea that the universe is always expanding, redshift is the term we hear a lot of because objects are generally moving away from each other, but blue shift is also a thing. And kind of clues in the name, blue shift is the opposite effect. So bodies moving towards each other, you'll end up with this more compressed light. So the light waves have a higher frequency and the color is shifted towards the blues part of the spectrum. In the context of space, we are generally thinking about light being shifted, but it's useful to consider how sound waves can also be shifted. So if you think about ambulance sirens, police sirens, um, changing frequency or changing pitch, depending on whether they're moving towards you or away from you. This effect is a very similar effect called the Doppler effect. If the ambulance, say, is approaching you, the sound waves are more compressed, and so the frequency of them is increased, and that's why the siren sounds higher pitched, and then you have the opposite effect when it's moving away from you. The reason we experience this with sound waves in our day-to-day, -day, but not light waves in our day-to-day, -day, is because light travels so much faster than anything that is moving, whereas sound is a lot slower than light. So sound is like 300 meters per second, and light, as I've said, many, many more zeros. So the light from the moving ambulance will technically be shifted a bit, but the ambulance is moving so much slower than the light coming from it that the shift is just negligible. You can actually work out how red shifted or blue shifted a galaxy is by looking at the spectrum of the light that is coming from it. You will compare this spectrum with a reference spectrum. So atomic lines of emission and absorption occur at very well-known wavelengths. So by measuring these lines in the spectrum of light coming from a galaxy, say, 
you can compare the location of these lines to the reference lines and that allows you to then see how shifted they are, what the difference is between what you're seeing and the well-known reference. And from there, you can see how red shifted the light is. And although I talked about the Doppler effect earlier as a useful way to like visualize what's happening here, there is actually a really important and quite interesting distinction between the Doppler effect and this redshift that we're talking about with galaxies. So the redshifts that we see in galaxies isn't exactly due to the Doppler phenomenon where we have objects moving relative to one another. It's due to the expansion of the universe. The difference there is that Doppler shifts arise from objects moving relative to one another. But expansion of the universe isn't about that. You, galaxies moving away from each other because of expansion of the universe aren't themselves moving. The space between them is just increasing. So two objects can actually be stationary in space and still experience redshift if the intervening space itself is expanding. I just think that's crazy. See, now do you understand why stuff like this keeps me up at night? It's, it's terrifying. If you're finding that hard to wrap your head around, then you're not alone. A really fun analogy that I actually see used quite a lot when trying to describe this difference between things moving and the space in between moving is one of a raisin loaf. People talk about how as a raisin loaf bakes, the raisins in it aren't moving away from one another, but the loaf in between is baking between them. I said between too many times. So from the raisin's point of view, POV, if you will, each raisin will see all the other raisins moving away from them, although they themselves are actually stationary within the loaf. Only the dough, or the universe, is the thing that's actually expanding. Does that, was that helpful or just ridiculous? That is all for today's video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Please let me know your favorite space facts that keep you up at night. I would love to hear about them and we can, you know, get upset together. We can get afraid and upset together. Until next time, goodbye.